the one that I do love, and I think so many people love, and we were quoting this the other day, is Ralph Wiggum, who oh. a lot of people, again, don't know that you also do. I love being here right now. <laughs> Currently joined by a blindfolded Sonny J and a blindfolded Sean Welby. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling about this, guys? <laughs> honestly? Yeah, honestly, how are you feeling? Uh, there's not many things that we do blindfolded in the studio. I get nervous when I can't see. We'll Same, that and then I feed off Sonny's nervous energy, and now I'm imagining the worst things. As long as my head's not getting shaved... I, can't, I just can't deal with that well, today, not on a Monday. Well, there's someone I wanted to introduce you to. Okay. Okay, now this person is very special to me, and I, and I thought I would introduce you in style, in the best way possible to be introduced, okay? Yeah. So a mystery guest is sat in the studio with us right now. Mystery guest, please reveal yourself. Ugh. Hi, I'm Bart Simpson. <gasps> Who the hell are you? No. <laughs> Take your blindfold <laughs> off. It's not it's 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 Oh, amazing. <laughs> Guys, say hello, Nancy, Sonny, Nancy, Sean. You have uh, awesome staff. You have such an amazing team. Oh. Seriously, such support, you guys, for as long as I've, as I've known you. So oh, mate, thank you so much. I mean, you, you, you're in London. I mean, what, what brings yeah. you to London, Nancy? Got a very special event happening tonight oh. at Wembley Stadium. Yes, indeed. Go on, tell everyone who's invited you down to Wembley Stadium. Thanks to you! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ed, so Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran invited Nancy down to go and watch the gig. Yeah. Oh my God, have you ever seen him live before? No, no. No, this is definitely a first. And it's just, seriously, because it all started with you. Oh, it was man. a big surprise. And one surprise after another. Uh -huh. You know, my, my step-niece... You know, because of that relationship, yep. and you're like, and then you hijack that interview, with Sabrina, <laughs> and the next thing you know, I'm on your show because you guys somehow arranged for that and surprised you, and then you surprised me about Ed and meeting Ed. Just a bunch of surprises. There's a lot of surprises yeah. going on. I'm catching flies here. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> I can't believe as well. We're talking about this, right? The 33rd season of The Simpsons yeah, has yeah. just aired. I mean, has yeah. I mean, how how does that feel looking back on it now for you? It's kind of un, it's kind of surreal a little bit cuz man, I go back that far. I was when we first started I was single um and then I very, but almost simultaneously it happened and I ended up meeting this guy. Within two two days, we moved in together. Two months, we got married. <gasps> two, well, and then how many was that? Uh, <laughs> nine months later, had our first baby. Yeah. <laughs> and then within two more years, had a second one. And it's just like, it, it, it was, it's been a whirlwind. And the progress of the show has just gone up, 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 up with over, I don't know, 800 guests that we've had on the show and just, we just did a read. I missed the flight yesterday. It was kind of like we just flew in, got in late last night and it's sort of based on the idea was like if there was no traffic problem, if the luggage was not a situation, if the flight arrived on time, I would have made it to the hotel to do the Zoom thing to actually do a table read from here, wow. which would have been oh. so cool. I've done it before, the wow. sa same time thing, but things the way they are right now is like an hour and a half at the airport, yeah. another two hour yeah, drive, yeah, yeah. and we kind of missed it. Oh, but I'm so glad you're here. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, but this is what I was going to say. I was going to say, guys, yeah, I mean, any you questions first. you want to ask, well, just, just go for it. Yeah. I've got Bart Simpson in front of me. So the, the first thing I have to say is, Nancy, when you first auditioned or went for the read of Bart, yeah. was it Bart? Because you never expect it to be a woman doing the guy's voice. That's right. Yeah, no, it wasn't Bart. And it to me, honestly, it was like no big deal. It was like another audition. Um, it wasn't a show. They said it was called an interstitial. And I'm like, what's that? It's a word that I had never used. And it wasn't like part of my vernacular. So I'm like, okay, well, so what is it? Well, she's an eight-year-old middle child, Lisa Simpson. I said, okay. So I went in, saw the picture of Lisa, monologue. But there next to her was a picture of Bart, 10-year-old, School hating underachiever and proud of, proud of it. So it's like no no question. I just had to do that. So did you almost pick up that script and say let me let me show you let me try it? Yeah yeah. It was pretty much like that. Matt Greening was in the, you know, in the office waiting for me, and I went in. I said, do you know, do you have any problem with me being the the kid? And he's like, no no go ahead. It's it has been done before. You know, June Foray did Rocky J. 
Rocky J. Squirrel, Lucille Bliss did um, Ro- Roger Ramjet. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the, the idea, I mean, the pipes and stuff are different. You don't, Bart, how many Barts would they have had by now? Yeah. They would have kept <laughs> the original, but um, so that's wow. how it was. And it was, but it was an instinctual thing of mine. You know, it was kind of a gut reaction. I thought, you know, you got to trust your instincts. So I did, and that was it. And I'm like, ba 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 ba. Oh my God, that's him. You're hired. He hired me on the spot, which is no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And interesting, but Yardley, she went in to read for Bart. Ah. No way. Yeah, so, that so Yardley, who trolls. does Lisa, yeah. went in for Bart. And that totally does not make any sense to me because you hear that voice. It's such a girl voice, mm. right? And in life, she sounds an awful lot. I don't sound so much like that, but Yardley <laughs> sounds a lot like Lisa. But she has this uh, this skill where she just amps her up just a teeny weeny bit. She brings that care. She turns her into a character with her own voice. So it's it's pretty genius what she does. Can you do a Lisa? Oh no, I would never <laughs> embarrass myself. Touch but, but, it. <laughs> but I tell you, but but Nancy, that you that is that I'm I'm right in thinking that you might be able to at some point step in for Julie Catherine with with Marge, right? Oh, you know, it would only be no if anything ever happened to any of the family. I think, and I think that's why the show's still on the air. Yeah, honestly, is we're all still alive. We're all alive and kicking. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, we are. But I could. I mean, I can do kind of a modest march. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Now you though, because when you visited me, yeah. it's like you are so good. You do so many imp- and you sing. You yeah. do the whole enchilada, and you've got these blue eyes. Come on. <laughs> I can't. I, my mine's more of a. My, I, I've got more of a Professor Frank type cap. Go high the glide the boy. Uh, but I mean, look, so you, you mentioned there, like, oh, so many uh, amazing guests have appeared on The Simpsons. Yeah. I mean, w- what special guests have you personally enjoyed where, where you're doing, a, you're doing a, a read with them and you're going, oh, my God, this person's in the studio? The one that was the most, I have to say, the most impressive to me, sorry for everybody else, but it was, <laughs> it was Meryl Streep, for sure, because she had such a reputation and still has this incredible reputation. I thought, what's she going to do? You know, she ended up playing Jessica Lovejoy, who's Reverend Lovejoy's daughter, who's been at boarding school and she has this little thing with Bart. They start playing together because they're both trouble. And um, so she shows up and it was a private it was a private taping because she couldn't be there the day that we were actually doing it. That's normally how it is, by the way. Yeah. I've only worked with a handful of, of these celebrities. But we did it at a different studio and she showed up and she looked she was so she looked like a Noxema commercial or like Neutrogena <laughs> or something. She was, <laughs> So clean looking, no makeup, a, a, you know, a dress and espadrille sandals. And like she came in and these introductions were made. And this is so-and-so and the casting director. And this is the director. And he's going to be directing the sound engineer. Oh, this is Nancy Carrick. She's the voice of Bart Simpson. She goes, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It was so sweet. So we go in. And we typically, without Meryl, we would do like four takes per scene. And there's about 12 scenes in a show. So we do about four takes. And But with Meryl, we start out and we did four, we did five, we did six. She's a guest. It's okay. She's learning. It's all right. And I'm like, wow. And she's like, you know, I just had another idea. Do you mind? Could I do another? Oof, I'm making her sound English. <laughs> she, Can I do another? And it's like, yeah, she does like 10 takes. Yeah. 10 takes. And they were all, and the idea, you know, it would yeah. be to just give as many options as you can, let them decide which is the best take. But she, she was so, so good. It was such a pleasure working with her. You, and I tell more about it. You can hear about it. Shameless self-promotion. No, go, go I, do it? It? I have a book that's out in Audible called... I'm still a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's a whole chapter about Meryl and um, J.K. Simmons and Mickey Rooney, uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Um, I talk about 50 Cent. Um, oh, wow. Talk to me about yeah. that. Yeah, 50 Cent going on the show. 50 Cent. Were you in the room with 50 Cent? Yes, I wow. was. It was kind of, okay, he shows up. He's kind of bigger than life. Yeah. And he's got a lot of gold on his neck. And, yeah. you know, you do, I learned very early on, you don't wear dangly earrings. You don't wear jiggly. You don't wear leather because it's too, too crunchy. Yeah. Oh, you know? when he's doing on the, the voice. Yeah, because yeah. these mics are super sensitive, right? You can hear a fish. Yeah. You can hear a fish. Dripping. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, can you do it? Can you do it? 
You just push a little air out. That's pretty oh, good. Oh, you did it. Do Say wit. Oh my oh. God. <laughs> that is amazing. I could be in the Simpsons. Stop <laughs> it. Like, like he's wearing a lot of gold stuff and he's like dingling all over the place. I'm like, 50, can you knock it down to a nickel? Because it's like you've got a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> can you knock it down to a nickel? Very good. <laughs> Looking at me like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, of course, your most famous voice would be Bart Simpson. I mean, what's your favorite most? What's your favorite Bart Simpson sentence? What would you? What would be your favorite thing to say as Bart? Gosh, he's got so many catchphrases. Did you ever have a favorite when you when you when you well, probably eat it? my shorts? I mean, that was that was a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was it a just hear it. I can just like listen, yeah. listen. to you just do a load of them. <laughs> eat my shorts. That was that was like a little thing that I did when I was in high school with the marching band. Yeah. And we would march from the stadium. I played the trumpet, or one year I played the um, French horn in the orchestra. And it was an all brass marching band. So one year I played the F horn, which is kind of like a baby baritone. Mm. Anyway, um, now you get an idea of my embouchure and how so much is related to my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we would march from the high school to the football stadium and the drum cadence would dun da da dun dun Fairmont West, dun da da dun dun Fairmont West. But my senior year, it switched over to dun da da dun dun eat my shorts. Dun -da -da -dun. <laughs> and people that were sitting along the streets on the way to that, the, the, football stadium they had no idea what we were saying because it's a lot of people 200 in the band and it just sort of sounded like dun, 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 yeah. but we had our own private joke and then i think it was like 13 or 14 years later it was during a table read and bart i just it seemed appropriate and i just threw out eat my shorts and it got such a big laugh and <laughs> Wow. Next thing, it's on billions of T-shirts. And it's like, and I, yeah. So that was your line. Yeah. So cool. So can, incredible, isn't it? I can claim that. What, what a lot of people don't know as well is that you, you also voice so many amazing characters on, on other uh, fam famous cartoons, including yeah. the Rugrats. Yeah. Now, oh. Chucky oh, is one of the most famous characters of all. <laughs> I love Chucky. Yeah. Oh, so, I mean, Chucky. how does Chucky's voice differ from Bart's? Well, here's Bart. This is Bart Simpson. What's happening? Mom, come on, Mom. Ugh, I was just wondering, uh, is Angelica here? Because I don't... I, uh, uh, oh, there's no clowns. No, I don't like clowns. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool to watch live. Wow. It's amazing. It's so good. I mean, look, I, I have to ask as well. You've been the, vo the voice of Bart Simpson since, since I'm right in saying, 1987. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. is there is there ever been a point in, in, in your time when you've been like, do you know what? I, I'm, I'm kind of bored of being Bart. No way. As <laughs> Bite not. your tongue. No, bored. No, but I, but, no I don't know. Because you're just like, you know, like if you're doing the same thing all the time, no. you're like, you know, creating new memories. No, no, no. Roman, Roman. No, the scripts are so good. Mm. They're still so good. And they bring in new people all the time. But it's like they've got a, they've got a, a, a writing staff of like, 18, 20 writers, yeah. and having done a show, you know, I had written a show, but by the time it was done, everybody got their mind and their their fingers from typing out all the, the, the rewrites on the script, and it's just, it got to go through this whole, you know, system of changing it and tweaking it and sitting in the room with the writers was such a great experience for me because I had never done that before. Mm. And to be with these guys, and now I'm kind of... I'm the new kid on the block, and I'm sort of keeping my mouth shut, like, just to see how, how does this actually work. So we're looking at a monitor, and the script is up on the monitor, and they're going line by line, like what works and what doesn't yeah. work, and changing it. And Al Jean, who at the time, wow. he was the showrunner at that time for, for that particular episode, and it was a scroll on down. Yeah, Okay, let's look at Marge's line, that one right there. Okay, and all of a sudden, they just started throwing out alternate, alternate reads. And, of course, I'm going, <laughs> Oh, I'm cracking up, <laughs> loving it, yeah. and I'm the only one laughing. So I'm thinking, okay, all right, maybe they've, they've I, don't, I don't know, they, uh, all right, this is a writer's room, okay. Oh. So then they pick out, the, Al Jean said, okay, we're going to go with such and such. So the mm. secretary is writing out the new line. They move on down. Maybe a half hour goes by, and I can't sit there anymore. So I decide I'm going to contribute an alternate to one of my lines. So I throw out an alternate and guess what happened? What's that? 
Nobody left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I guess I'm officially a writer on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Roman does it all the time. It's fine. No, I've, got, I've genuinely got to ask, while you're here in front of me, because you, you were talking about your first audition and, you know, seeing how far The Simpsons has actually come. Yeah. It, obviously is incredible. Did you genuinely ever think that it would go from that being your first audition to where The Simpsons is actually n now? No. I, nobody had any idea. We were all kind of just like riding on, you know, a prayer, a, a dream and a prayer. It just wasn't... It wasn't, I was thinking, geez, I just hope they pick it up for another season, you know? And it was like that for a long time. 32 other seasons. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you reckon you two could ever agree? Because I know, you you know, Roman will quote The Simpsons to us every single day. But do you think you could agree on what is the best ever episode so far? <sighs> well, I definitely have a personal favourite. I have a personal favourite. Wow. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> to me, it's like trying to, who's your favorite kid? Yeah. Yeah, everyone has a favorite though, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have one episode that you think is that, that was my, that was the one. No, I think. That, when, for me, when Bart sells his soul oh. is, is still yeah. the, the most fantastic For five episode. bucks, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that still to this day, people around the world believe from The Simpsons that the reason why people say, bless you, is because they think that's your soul trying to escape. And oh. no, sorry, when you, when you sneeze, that's your soul trying to escape. I'm saying, bless you, crams it back in. Oh. That's the only, yeah. that's just a line from The Simpsons that people started believing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> done, obviously, your Bart impression. You've done your Chucky impression from the Rugrats. Is there any <laughs> others that you genuinely love doing? Like maybe Nelson or... Do you know what I mean? Okay, can you do Nelson? <laughs> you <are so laughs> that's cute. what I'm trying to say. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right, Sonny, I just wanted to say it is a pleasure sitting right beside you. You are Sonny, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> I, the one that I do love, and I think so many people love, and we were quoting this the other day, is Ralph Wiggum, who oh. a lot of people, again, don't know that you also do. I love being here right now. <laughs> I especially love those special hat you have on. It just covers your ears. <laughs> it's unreal, isn't it? It's it is so amazing. Good. I love him. It is amazing. I love her. How many voices on the show do you actually do? I do six, but unless you want to include Maggie, because she doesn't really talk on the mm. show, but somebody has to fill in the... Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'll what? take the credit for that. <laughs> I, just, I just presume that was like a sound effect. I didn't know you had to actually voice Maggie. You know, when you really listen to the show, it is it is a sound effect, but I do the placement for it. Wow. And I like to claim I really do do her voice. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do the crying. I do the crying, and it looks ugly. So Go don't, on, please. Don't look we won't. No. <laughs> do, do it. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah. God, let's hear it. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting our money's worth here. It's so great, though. I'm joking. For the listening audience, they are actually not looking at me. Just so you know, you oh, guys yeah, sure. are okay. Here she's crying. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Here's Ralph Wiggum. You take his voice and bring it a little bit lower and make him a little more serious. This would be Todd Flanders. Oh. I'm just, I get to anoint their feet. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So that's him. And then there's um, the other uh, thug is is uh, Kearney. Kearney, yeah. <laughs> So this is this is Nelson Muntz, Nelson Mandela Muntz, by the way. But if you soften him up just a little bit and make him more breathy than throaty, then you got Kearney. <laughs> so that's him. And Very then there's nice. one more, and then it's um, database. Nah, he sort to me he sounds like he's related somehow to Frank. Yes. Nah, oh, well, what's happening? I ain't glaving. Ah, the meteor's coming directly at. <laughs> a little sing song. It is so fantastic. Honestly, Nancy, such a pro. But look, I'm so lucky as well because obviously um, it wasn't too long ago. It was back in April that you, you invited me over to your house and I came and saw your, your wonderful house and you've got all this fantastic merchandise and you gave me a wonderful bicycle that I've now got in my house. He's been dining out on this for ages. It was amazing. I love it. Was like, it. it was like going Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. It was yeah, a joke, yeah, right? But you, there are, is... you do, are you actually riding it to work? You said I, haven't, you were... I haven't ridden it yet. Okay. I'm not going to okay. lie. It, 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 I don't know how far, quick I can go on it. it. <laughs> 
He can't ride it. They won't way. let me ride it because they think that I'll ruin it. It needs to stay. It needs to stay pristine. It can't ride its way. I've seen him ride a bike. <laughs> <laughs> but but what I will say is that you have some amazing merch in your house. What what would you be? What would you say is your pride and joy of merchandise from The Simpsons? Because there's been so many over the years. Well, probably the one that I have loved the most over the years was this pinball machine. Actually, I had two of them. Mm. I had two of them, and I, I ended up donating them to, like, the local Boys and Girls Club and, and a, a police um, activities, like, after school thing, because mm. there was just no room to... I I had a space, but it got repurposed. I'm like, what am I going to do this? So I ended up donating, but that was really cool, because it would have all the bells and whistles and the dings, and, oh, loser, loser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. So good. And yeah. and also something that, that's been very strange is that from, from this weird meeting that we've kind of all met, you know, this is from the show a few months ago that you came on and you surprised me. And then after that, you helped us surprise Ed Sheeran. Mm. Yeah. I've never seen Ed <laughs> shed a tear before <laughs> yeah. in my life. So touching. Uh, it was and, and literally, I've never seen him surprised. And uh, we were all in the room at yeah. the time and, and it was insane. Lovely. It was wow. amazing. But but now you and Ed, you formed a great friendship. You're going to, to see him tonight. I yeah. mean, what, how, what have you and Ed been kind of speaking about? Are you going to give him any memorabilia? What do you reckon? <laughs> um, well, I don't want to give it away. Um, he, I have a little special something for him to present to him for sure amazing definitely hey well look you're also um doing something very special you're hosting your own masterclass on how to do voice acting yeah you can do that a lot of people um it's an app that you get it's just masterclass and they've got so many people on there from Annie Leibovitz to tony hawk to um i think christina aguilera does one yeah chris jenner recently i think just did one yeah amazing Ron Howard, uh, you. Puck, there's cooking, any kind of anything, <laughs> me. Uh, actually, I was so honored they asked me to do it. And this was early 2020 when they asked me to do it. And I was, of course, thrilled to be able to do it. But then, because that was the beginning of, of the big world nightmare, yeah. is that like when they record it, they do it in a studio and it only takes two, two to three days to film somebody doing it. But they decided it was so genius because it was about voiceovers they ended up animating me. Oh, that's so clever. And, oh, I'm looking at that. It, it, and it took us about nine months to produce the whole thing. So clever. An amazing team of professionals putting this together and a lot of input from myself and my team also yeah. kind of helping to make sure that everything was all the, you know, T's were crossed, the I's were dotted and things that they didn't know that would help them. And it was a very collaborative kind of a contribution. So... I'm I'm very proud of it and animated Nancy's kind of cute. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've been given a card here by the producer. Yeah. We've all got one, have we? Or yeah, we've all so, got one. We've yeah. all got one. So basically, our producer has put a picture of a cartoon on this card. We've never seen them before. By the end of the chat, we just want to see if you can give us some pointers on how these characters should sound. Oh, okay. Okay. So, oh, first of all, I have this old man here. <laughs> How would you how would you do his voice? Well, I'm just looking at him. He looks like he's probably I'm going to make him sound a little. He doesn't quite look as old as I I don't know. He's super thin. He's got bony knees. He's kind of styling on his floody pants. He's <laughs> he's got floods on. I kind of like that. The cane um is obviously bent his back. He's got a big, big schnoz. Yeah, big um, nose. Big nose. But no I, teeth by the looks of things. Yeah, it, 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 he doesn't have any teeth at all. <laughs> I, I kind of get the... <laughs> <laughs> What should we call him, do you think? Weezer Geezer. <laughs> Weezer Geezer. Okay, lovely. Sonny, what you got? Okay, I have got... It looks like a dog. It's oh, a dog. he's so cute. It's a dog with a big nose. Okay, he so Sonny's like holding a, up a picture of a dog right now. Yeah. He kind of looks like the dog, sort of, with with teeth hanging out this, his mouth. He kind of reminds me of the dog from Up. Yes. yes. A little yes. bit like Doug. Yeah, Does he look bit, like yeah. Doug a little yes. bit? Yes. He's got this teeth like this. He sort of, sort of sounds like this, I think. Oh, oh, it's my tails, Megan. I'm a happy guy. I'm just a happy guy. <laughs> <laughs> just a happy guy. That's basically Sonny. <laughs> That's me. So, this, call that dog Sonny. That's so good. <laughs> when Nancy does a voice, you, your whole face yeah. contorts you to that the thing. You become yeah. the character. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing. It's infectious to watch. It's you so great. You can't help it, though, right? Well, yeah. well that's why I want, I'm quite interested to see this very, very over-enthusiastic squirrel. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, it's a, it's a girl. He sort of sounds like maybe Bart on helium. Helium. I really love acorns. <laughs> <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, oh so, so oh, good. Oh, oh. Nancy, that is absolutely oh, fantastic. So good. Thank you so much yeah, for coming on to the show. Oh, today. pleasure. Total thank pleasure. You. It's so lovely to see you. And uh, don't forget, you can obviously see uh, Nancy's um, masterclasses. You can get the book as well, uh, the Audible book. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, please put your hands together for the one, the only, Nancy Cartwright. Yeah! Yeah!